Tapu is the main island of Tonga. It's home to Tonga's capital city, Nukualofa, as well as 70.5% of Tonga's entire population, making it Tonga's most populated island. Tonga's total population is just over 100,000, so that makes about 70,000 people living on Tonga Tapu. It's about 45 kilometers from the easternmost tip to the westernmost tip, and 100 square miles, or 260 kilometers, in total. In other words, Tonga Tapu is pretty small. In fact, I'm pretty sure that you could drive from one length of the island from the westernmost tip to the easternmost tip of the island in around one hour or an hour and a half. And you could probably drive the circumference of the island in about three hours. Now, um, I've given myself the challenge today to see if I can see all of Tonga's main sites in one day. And I've started here, right at the western tip of the island, because this exact spot is where the first Europeans landed in Tonga in 1643, 21st of January 1643. So the first European to land here was Abel Tasman. Now he was a Dutch explorer, and when he landed here, um, he called the island Amsterdam. Um, of course, and uh, since then it's been renamed, so this island is, is now called Tonga Tapu officially. And Abel Tasman's writings of Tonga were the first writings, the first record of Tonga and Tonga Tapu to be recorded in history. After spending some time hanging out with Abel, I head off east down the island to begin my epic one-day Tonga sightseeing tour. Today is um, actually one of my favorite spots in Tonga and one of the least disappointing um, spots. You can see it right behind me. I just got a little bit wet from that one actually. Um, actually, the next one is my favorite, but this is uh, what we call the blowholes. So these blowholes are made up of a coral reef that stretches for kilometers down the island. Um, and these blows, they can get to 18 meters high. Right now, it's not too windy and it's not a super high tide. So these blows are not getting as high as they can. Um, but you can still get the picture as to what uh, they can potentially look like. Uh, now in Tongan, they're called Mapo o Vela, uh, which means the, the whistles of Vela. I think I said that right. Um, and that's because of the sound that um, it makes, the whistling sound it makes when uh, the water, the pressure of the water pushes through the holes uh, from the coral reef and, uh, and creates these amazing, um, amazing spots of water that you can see behind me. So I'm gonna go and have a walk on the rocks and uh, take a closer look and hopefully not get too wet. If you have all day, um, or at least a little bit more time than me, and you're not so worried about breaking your ankle on the, the coral, you can actually walk um, for a long way. It goes about five kilometers um, and walk down. And you can enjoy this very scenic walk whilst um, getting a little bit wet from the sprays of the, um, of the blowholes. But you definitely do have to be careful because this is uh, just completely like a coral bed and you don't know where you're gonna sink and fall uh, definitely adds to the adventure of the blowholes. Okay, 
so I'm definitely a little bit wet right now um, from getting too close uh, to the blowholes behind me um, and I'd love to spend all day here but got to check out the next site so and like I said actually the next site is my favorite it's not quite as exciting as, um, as these things behind me but it's equally as unique and cool so let's not waste any time let's go The next site is just a short drive away, and it's definitely one of my favorites. So site number three, um, and like I said, is my favorite site, uh, but I probably hyped it up a little bit too much um, because it's my favorite site for the reason that it's not really much of a site. So we're currently at the, um, the three-headed coconut, which you can see uh, just behind me. And now you'll see um, signs everywhere for this coconut, um, for this three-headed coconut. You'll see signs all throughout town leading you here. Um, it's on trip advisors, like top 10 things that you have to do. It's um, on Lonely Planet's list for top 10 things you have to do in Tonga Tapu. And I have to admit, I drove past this. Like, this is on my way home. I drove past this. Um, at least three or four times before I realized that this sign here doesn't like point to somewhere that you have to go but rather just points to the uh, three-headed coconut right there um, so that's where it is and I guess they must have just found it it's it's surrounded by palm trees right and I guess they must have um, cut down the other palm trees around it to, to really highlight the the greatness of the um, the three-headed coconut um, so uh, we're going to admire it and and also the thing about the three-headed coconut is is I don't want to take this away from Tonga but um it's, it's not really got three heads it's got um it's got two heads and on one of the heads there's a third one poking out of it so uh, yeah I guess the I'll let them have it but um it's not it's not really three-headed I'm almost already halfway across the island and it's a perfect time to stop for some lunch and a recharge in the city center. Nukualofa is located on the north coast, almost at the exact middle point between east and west. It's here that you'll find the best of Tonga's restaurants, cafes and bars. And if you want to check out one of the best places to visit um, in Nukualofa, one of the most iconic places, it's definitely this building behind me um, which is the Friends Cafe and it's located in one of the oldest and most beautiful um, buildings in Tonga, the um, Elizabeth building built in there 1875. So let's stop, have a recharge, get some food before we head further east for the next few sites. halfway through our day site tour of Tonga Tapu and it's definitely time to have a pit stop and re-energize. Um, so I thought I would show you guys one of Tonga's traditional foods and also one of my favorite foods. So this is otaika and it is basically raw fish, freshly caught from that ocean over there I hope, um, in coconut sauce with I guess various different vegetables There's like tomatoes, spring onions and then this as well which is Tonga's like yam. I can't remember the name of it in Tongan uh, but you see this everywhere everyone grows it you see it on the streets everywhere and it's pretty much like what we'd have as a standard chip or fry. Um, it's pretty good. 
So uh, I'm gonna turn off the camera for now and enjoy this and then uh, I'll get back to you guys for the next site. Next up is the Landing Bridge, otherwise known as Hufangalupe. It's located east of Nukualofa on the west coast and in the complete middle of nowhere. The roads to get here can be a bit rough, so make sure you have a car that can handle it. lunch break um, I've arrived at the landing bridge which you can see behind me uh, it's a rock completely formed out of coral and uh, the waves and the water coming in has formed this kind of um, bridge you can see right behind me it's completely in the middle of nowhere and um, you have to drive through some very interesting roads to get here but it's worth it for this site and the site that you get um, that I'm about to show you of the sea um, of Tonga's west coast, so I'll show you that right now. trek a little bit further um, away from the landing bridge we can uh, see this beautiful site so this is a beach that's only accessible um, during low tide so during high tide it's not there um, I've yet to find a way down but there's a way to get down I've heard it's pretty full of spiders though so I'm gonna give that a miss today um, if we look further behind me uh, we can see just about here this is the blowholes where we were earlier and then if we carry on down the west coast of the island to this tip, this is where Abe Talisman is, okay? So that's where Abel Talisman is right there. So we went all the way down and we've come around here now. So that's about three quarters or about half of the way um, from west to east. And it's only taken a few hours so far. So we still have a couple more sites along the way. Uh, before we get right to the bottom to the west to the east coast at the bottom and then head back up west so so far so good let's hope the weather stays like this site of the day takes us further up the east side of the island to a site of pretty big historical significance. All right, so site number five as we head up further east uh, on Tonga Tapu and we are currently at Captain Cook's landing spot. So Captain Cook arrived in Tonga for the first time in 1773 and he actually came here three times. So the first time was 1773 and then he came here again in 74 and then in 77 um, I think 77 was his last time here um, and he stayed for several months actually and I, it is uh, because of Captain Cook's observations um, especially on the island of Eowa um, that uh, Tonga 
gets its name uh, the Friendly Island Group because the hospitality uh, of the islanders was so good towards Captain Cook. So you're gonna see behind me just now, this is the spot where Captain Cook landed in Tonga Tapu for his third time in 1777. It's a long time ago. And um, if I walk back up, um, you can see the site um, of a famous tree that uh, Captain Cook, when he first landed here, I'm guessing it was pretty hot, uh, so he needed to get some shade. The story goes is that um, when he got here, he sat under the shade under a big bayan tree and that's what this plaque here commemorates. And in 1970, Queen Elizabeth II with the Duke of Edinburgh and Princess Anne came here to commemorate this spot. Bet they thought it was thrilling. On my way to the next site, and I spot this sign. Let's take a closer look. So unfortunately, um, despite the sign saying that it's open every weekday until 6 p.m., it seems like the caves are closed, but it's okay because there's still something to see here um, as our second to last site uh, before we head up to Haumanga and uh, there's a little bit of a secret beach down here so not only can you go and see the caves but we can go and head to the beach so I'll show you the way. So right there just behind me you can see the ticket booth and it's usually $15 entry per person to the cave um, and the entrance to the cave is just here right behind me but unfortunately um, as you can see the gate is closed at the moment, so we can't quite go to the caves. But no worries, um, I'm gonna show you a uh, very nice beach that um, I guess not so many people know about. I haven't ever seen anyone here at this beach actually. Um, so it's a nice little secluded private beach um, with a beautiful coral reef uh, in the front so you can go, uh, go snorkeling as well. Just in front, you can see the island of Ewa, one of the oldest islands in the South Pacific. We've almost arrived at the very tip of the east side of the island, and here you'll find one of Tonga's most famous sites if not the most famous. Okay, so we finally made it to the most eastern point of the island right now. If we went any further, we'd probably fall into the sea. So we made it all the way from the western tip down to the eastern tip, uh, which is where we are now. And we are here to see the Haumanga, which is just behind me. Now, although nobody really knows why it's here or why it was made, for what purpose, it's Tonga's most popular site um, and it's known as the Stonehenge of the Pacific. It's made up of three blocks um, made of coral and so it's called a trithalon. I think I got that right. So Tonga is sometimes referred to as the land where time begins. And that's because right here is one of the first places in the world to get the new sunrise of the day. So now we've checked out the Haumanga. We'll take a little bit of a walk to get right to the end of this island, um, check out the views, and then head back west to catch the sunset.
this most western tip and now you can see behind me we are at the most eastern tip on Tonga Tap. so we went from all the way west east and saw everything that Tonga Tapu has to offer in between. So I hope you enjoyed traveling the entire island of Tonga Tapu and I'm gonna get off this very quickly because the overhang is massive and I feel like I'm too heavy so I'm running away. After making it all the way to the other side of the island, it's time to head back west where we can catch the sunset from the best place in Tongatapu. So I'm now back on the west coast in a place called Hatapu and it looks like I did it! Managed to visit all of Tongatapu's main sites in one day. It was a very long day and I'm very happy to, uh, to be back up here, have a little bit of a chill out and enjoy this gorgeous sunset that is going on behind me. Um, so Hatapu is definitely the place that you want to be to watch the sunset. It's the best, best place you'll find in Tonga and uh, there's a beautiful sunset here every day. So I hope you enjoyed exploring Tonga Tapu with me and uh, if you have any recommendations for places I should go and see next time, let me know. See you later!